This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, May the 19th, 2019. It's the feast day of Pope St. Celestine V. He was elected Pope in 1294 under weird circumstances. First, he was the last Pope to be elected without a conclave. And that means that the 12, yes, 12 total cardinals in the world elected him without any timetable whatsoever. They debated endlessly. They took vacations. It took two years to elect Peter Angelario, who was a Benedictine monk and a hermit. He became Pope Celestine V in the middle of the summer. And basically every decision he made and document he wrote was annulled by his successor, Pope Very Not a Saint, Boniface VIII. Celestin is remembered for one thing and one thing only. He freely resigned the office of Pope in December 1294, six whole months after his election. He would be the only Pope of the second millennium to retire from office. The next would be Benedict XVI in 2013. Today in 1743, Jean-Pierre Christen, a French scientist from Lyon and permanent secretary of the French Academy of Arts and Sciences, devised a unit of measure for temperature in which zero is the freezing point of water and 100 is its boiling point. He put his design into production as the thermometer of Lyon. The reason you've probably never heard of him is that the Swedish scientist Anders Celsius did the same thing very slightly earlier, but he did it upside down. He made zero the boiling point of water and 100 the freezing point. Christin and Celsius did basically the same work, but in different directions. Somehow, though, Celsius got the credit. For mega nerds, today is the big giant day in 2019 because the unit Celsius and the unit Kelvin have been officially redesigned alongside all the other SI base units. They are no longer based on boiling water and freezing water, but rather on the Boltzmann constant, which we all remember from our reading is a measure of the relative kinetic energy of particles in a gas such that K equals R over Avogadro's constant. And I'm pretty sure that clears everything up. Today in 1925, two radically different men were born across the planet from each other. In the United States, Malcolm Little was born in central Nebraska to politically active black parents. At a young age, his father was murdered and his mother had a nervous breakdown. And at the age of 18, he left the foster care system and relocated to Harlem. He was jailed for petty crime and it was in prison that he connected with the politically and racially charged Nation of Islam. He changed his name to Malcolm X, and after his parole in 1952, became one of the most visible and vocal civil rights advocates in the nation. Whereas Martin Luther King Jr. advocated peace and unity, Malcolm X advocated violence and separation. In the mid-1960s, after MLK's assassination, Malcolm X had a change of heart. He changed his message to mirror King's call for unity and peace. Across the world in 1925, Salot Saar was born to rich parents in Cambodia. He was educated among the elite and relocated to Paris, where he found himself among the communists. In 1953, he returned to Cambodia and worked to bring communism to his homeland. In 1960, he got his wish and he became the head of the Communist Party in Cambodia. Aided by the Vietnamese military, Pol Pot, as he was known, became the grand dictator of his nation and spent the next 20 years murdering roughly 25% of the population of his homeland. All in all, he killed about 1.5 million people. When he heard that he had finally been deposed and would be extradited to face charges of genocide, he died peacefully in his bed. At least that's what his wife said. Before any investigation could take place, he was cremated and buried. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.